What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode. So today I'm going to do something completely different. I had a request uh, to explain shooting high ISO, which I know goes 100% completely against what everyone's been taught and shown and what's been thrown out there uh, into the interwebs and uh, photography groups. Uh, it's always a matter of shooting with the lowest ISO that you possibly can. Um, however, that doesn't always work. Uh, so there was a video that I did in regards to shooting high ISO and uh, I mean from 4,000 to 8,000 to 10,000 ISO. I was using a Pentax K30 um, and uh, this person had asked uh, if I could do uh, just a regular standard video but explaining uh, how to effectively shoot high ISO. So I'm going to explain uh, the way ISO the way the noise actually works in ISO or at high ISO. Uh, so I guess I'll start with that first um, and then we'll get into taking some pictures and I'll walk you through it. So basically if you look at it in regards to uh, hopefully you're familiar with sound um, like speakers and amplifiers things like that um, and sound gain controls and all that. Once you reach a certain threshold the audio becomes distorted. The input signal begins to overpower uh, the output signal. Um, and that's when uh, there's a lot of overlap. Um, and it's basically the exact same thing. All noise is, is an over amplification of the input signal versus the output. Um, generally speaking, it affects the darker areas within the image. Uh, so the shadows, the blacks, things like that. Um, shooting higher ISO in decent light isn't actually that bad. Uh, and the images, uh, generally speaking, should be completely usable if you're using them online, social media, things like that. I would not suggest shooting at 10,000 ISO and then uh, printing it at like 24 by 36 or anything insane like that, maybe 8 by 10 maximum. Uh, but you would really have to have your post-processing down pat. Uh, anyway, so um, I'm going to take some shots and uh, we'll add some light to those shots. So you'll see the actual differences between, uh, you know, a, a darker image at a very high ISO versus an image that I, that's actually lit better at the exact same ISO. And uh, you'll see what those differences are and hopefully this will help you. So let's go. Okay, so here we have my K3 and I'm using the HD DA55300 PLM. So it is a closed down aperture lens of 4.5 to 6.3. We're gonna keep it at 6.3 uh, just for the sake of this video. I'm shooting at 55 millimeters and you can see this uh, dining room table that I have there. There's some darker areas, some lighter areas from uh, a bit of the outdoor light coming in through the door. Now, you'll see along the bottom here, I've got 6400 ISO at 6.3 and uh, 1 30th of a second shutter speed. Now, what I was saying before about shooting at lower ISO doesn't always work. Imagine you're trying to capture a little bit of action and 1 30th of a second just isn't quite going to cut it. You know what I mean? So you need to bump your shutter speed up, which means you'll have to actually increase your ISO. Right. That's one of the situations. And I used to be one of those people, I'll be honest, you know, I would not shoot over 800 ISO, no matter what. Always use flash, shoot 800, done. Always worked. Until one day I was at a live event. I was the official photographer. I was doing coverage and there was a lot of videography happening. I couldn't use the flash and it was a salsa dance uh, event and uh, there was a lot of really fast action and I had absolutely no choice in order to capture the action I had to shoot at 8,000, 10,000, 12,800 ISO. I didn't have a choice. It was either I get no photos that are usable whatsoever or I take the chance and bump the ISO up to get whatever I could. 
and it actually worked out in the end. And ever since then, I've been a lot more comfortable in regards to shooting at high ISO. Now, the other drawback to shooting high ISO is the fact that you do lose detail. I'm not going to dispute that. That is 100% the case. You will lose detail in your image. You can recover some of it with uh, bumping up micro contrast and fine contrast, uh, but it's not going to be the same as lowering the ISO. So it is a trade-off. It's just not an impossible thing to do. So anyway, we're going to do a shot here at 8,000. And let's see what that looks like. So you can see this is all noisy. It's all green, right? All along there. You can see all the grain from the noise. Let's scroll down. Yeah, especially along the wall here and along the shadow area here. Now, what happens if we add some light to the equation? So I'm going to turn the overhead light on here. Unfortunately, uh, it's one of those lights that takes a while to actually kick in. Uh, it's a gradual brightness light, so it might take a little bit. Uh, but for now, I will pause this, and once these lights are actually up and running, I'll be right back. Okay, so now you'll notice uh, that this is now set at ISO 5000, right? So, we will increase the shutter speed. So 1 50th of a second, which will help a little bit more in stopping the invisible motion that you can't see in this video. And uh, let's keep it at ISO 8000. And now it's 1 to 64. Well, that's interesting, 64. So let's go see what that says. Nope. All right. Interesting. All right, well, let's do it anyway. And you can see, not nearly as much green. All I did was just turn on some overhead lighting, and that's it. It's the only thing I did. So a lot of the high ISO aspect, it's not so much the fact that the camera can't do high ISO, they can. It just has to do with the exposure and how much light is actually getting into the sensor. So you'll see this is completely and utterly grainy. And let's go to the other one I just did. And you can see clearly it is not nearly as grainy. So that's the one thing. You need to pay attention to the light. Light is 100% everything. Um, I do notice this is at one, this is at ISO 6400. So let's drop this down. So you go one higher, so it should be above 8,000. We'll do another one just to keep it even. There we go. See what that looks like. Yeah, it's still not nearly as much green. It's a lot more, actually, more detail here. And in post processing, again, uh, with the noise reduction software and things like that that are available, this is actually an image that could be cleaned up. So it's just a quick video uh i mean it's really not much else to say you can see it yourself so let's not that one this is the other 8000 you can clearly see there's a complete and utter lack of detail in this image it's completely completely grainy everywhere everywhere let's go back to the other one So there you have it. It's just a matter of knowing your lighting. And uh, each camera is different, obviously. So what you need to do, what I always do is I do some test shots at high ISO. I review the image at 100%, take a very good look at it and see how much noise there is. If it's too much, what you need to figure out is what is the highest ISO that you're comfortable with shooting? I know my post-processing. Um, you know, I, I know what I'm, you know, the software that I use is DxO Photo Lab 3. 
uh, with that software and a couple of tweaks with uh, the curve, uh, tone curve, you can eliminate a ridiculous amount of noise. So that's pretty much my secret is I use DXO. <laughs> uh, other than that, it's just a matter of just focusing on keeping, a, keeping your eyes open on the available light and how that light is affecting the subject and how much shadow and blacks are actually going to be in that image. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, just add light and you can shoot high ISO. I shoot high ISO outdoors if I have to. Uh, there's some lenses I have that are only sharp at f8. Anything below f8 and they're garbage. So with that said, shooting at f8, if it's not completely bright outside, you know, you do need to increase the ISO, especially if you're doing wildlife, birds in flight, things like that. So f8, ISO 8000 at 1600th of a second actually is usable and you can still get a sharp image because there is enough light um yeah, that's pretty much it really uh anyway if you have any comments leave them down below i hope this helps you out and you've seen everything for yourself if there's anything else you'd like me to go into more detail with let me know and you guys will see me on my next video peace